systematic review of the latest development of probiotics intervention as prevention and therapy for COVID-19 infection. My name is Associate Professor Dr. Li Len Han. I come from the bi Microbiome and Bioresource Research Trade, Jeffrey Charles School of Medicine and Health Sciences from Monash University, Malaysia campus. So this is the overview of the talk. This mounting evidence suggests that SARS-CoV-2 may impact on host microbial flora and gut microbiome in patients affected by COVID-19. In particular, alterations of gut microbiota composition might be a facilitating factor for an impaired immune response against the SARS-CoV-2. At the early pandemic stage, numerous scientific articles consisted of review, perspective, and correspondence. Proposed probiotics could be promising for prevention and treatment of COVID-19 patients. But there was no solid clinical evidence supporting the rationale of using probiotics in COVID-19 patients until only recently we have some reports that shows positive clinical outcomes. Therefore, this systematic review aimed to evaluate the potential of probiotics in the prevention and treatment of COVID-19 patients. So the systematic review um, started with identification, uh, with records collected from four databases, namely PubMed, Scopus, Ovid, MapLine, and Word of Science. And we come out with a total of 443 of records. And after going through the screening eligibility, and uh, at the end of that, um, studies included for qualitative analysis is a total of 24 studies. And at the end, um, the studies designs we have from this included studies involving molecular computational studies, in vitro and in vivo studies, and a total of eight different observational studies, and also a total of eight RCTs. And we have a total of three studies to try to illustrate the positive effects of um, probiotic use. Uh, against COVID-19 infection infected patients. And the first studies is indicating the oropharyngeal probiotics in preventing respiratory tract infections among frontline medical staff fighting against COVID-19. And it's published as a pilot study in Frontiers in Bioengineering and Biotechnology. So it is a randomized controlled trial involving a total of 200 frontline medical staff who are in close contact with COVID-19 hospitalized patients in Wuhan, China. So the probiotic use are the oral lozenges uh, with no less than 1 billion CFU per lozenges of uh, Estomophilus uh, probiotics. And with this table, you can clearly see the comparisons between the probiotic groups, which is highlighted in blue, and also the control group, which is highlighted in red. So the table is showing the probability of not having any episodes of respiratory tract infection. So if you compare between these two groups, the probiotic groups showing the cumulative incidence of respiratory tract infection stopped increasing on day 10. In other words, um, the probiotic groups, frontliners in the probiotic groups, has been conferred uh, more protection against respiratory tract infection compared to the control group. And this table uh, highlighted very nicely the difference analysis of each factors between the probiotic groups and the control groups for these frontliners. And you can clearly see so the incidence of respiratory tract infection is much lower in the probiotic groups, which is around 8% compared to the control group, which is around 23%. And other indicators such as sick days, duration of each episode, days of absence from works, and so on, 
you can see that frontliners in the probiotic groups are doing much better compared to the frontliners in the control group. And here we have study two, which is the probiotic use is associated with improved clinical outcomes among hospitalized patients with COVID-19, which is published in the Journal Therapeutic Advances in Gastroenterology. And the propensity score match retrospective cause study that is a total of uh, 300 adults uh, tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 with 150 of them with probiotics and the other 150 without probiotics. And the probiotic use uh, here is stated uh, with 10 to the power of 7 CFU of P. bacterium lactobacillus and enterococcus. figure here is showing the secondary outcomes of the matching. We can pick an example here, A, with clinical improvements uh, based on comparing the probiotic groups with the non-probiotic groups in number of days required for clinical improvements. So you can see that uh, for the probiotic groups, the number of days required for clinical improvements is uh, in general shorter compared to the non-probiotic groups, showing that the probiotic treatment does confer advantage to help in clinical improvements. Whereas this figure two showing the estimates of cumulative clinical improvement rates, you can see that as highlighted in red, the probiotic groups has uh, much better clinical improvement rates compared to the blue highlight, uh, line highlighted in blue, which is the non-probiotic groups. is showing the clinical outcomes after propensity score matching with primary outcomes uh, which is the time to clinical improvement in days and also secondary outcomes uh, which involve all of these different criteria. We look at some of the significant difference between the non-probiotics and the probiotic groups. Outcomes such as time to clinical improvement in days for the non-probiotic groups the median will be 21, 21 days and for the probiotic group, it is 18 days. So it's a significant difference there. And for secondary outcomes such as hospital stay, duration of viral shredding, and duration of fevers, you could see um, there's uh, obvious difference between these two groups as well. Now moving on to the third study, it is regarding the use of oral bacterial therapy in patients with COVID-19, uh, a retrospective cohort study published uh, early January of the year. In this retrospective cohort study, it's a total of 200 adults tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 and the probiotic treatment used is from Sivomix containing a mixture of probiotics from Streptococcus thermophilus and uh, various groups of um, Lactobacillus strains and also the Bifidobacterium lactis. And the uh, BAT, best available treatment, uh, could be low molecular weight heparin plus one or more between hydroxychloroquine, acetromycin antivirus, and tozilizumab. So a total of 200 patients been enrolled for the BAT arm, best available treatment. There's a total of 112 patients. And for the BAT plus OB arm, OB means oral bacterial therapy arm, there's a total of 88 patients. And I'd like to bring everyone's attention to the death rate you could see there's a huge difference in the death rate between um, the BAT plus OB arm comparing to the BAT arm itself, whereby the BAT plus OB arm has much lower death rate compared to the BAT arm alone. Showing, um, comparing the BAT and also the BAT plus oral bacterial therapy arm in that pro death probability and time. So showing that the beneficial effects of combined BAT and oral bacterial therapy on the parameter death probability is significant. The forest plot multivariate analysis with 95% of confidence interval showing that factors such as age, CRP, platelet, CV events were associated with the increased risk of mortality with uh, oral bacterial therapy, OB was an independent variable associated with a reduced risk for death. 
And the conclusion of the presentation is that this study suggests that probiotic use remain promising for the prevention and treatment of COVID-19, but more randomized controlled trials are required to validate the optimal dose, duration, specific probiotic species before any therapeutic recommendation for probiotic intervention in COVID-19 is given. These are the references. I'd like to acknowledge and thanks everyone in the team for making this presentation possible, especially to Dr. Tan Law for his help in making these slides. Thanks for listening everyone. Have a nice day and take care.